Join Carol Davies on Global Voice Radio, the host of Only the Best for You. Be a change maker and unlock the secret to your best life. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast, Only the Best for You, here on Global Voice Radio. My name is Carol Davies. I'm with the Passion Motivator Coaching Company. I am so pleased each week to share with you the best information and speakers about how you can be a change maker to make the world and yourself the best you can be. Today, I'm reporting to you on a topic that has long intrigued me, dealing with our inner child. This is part one of a two-part series. I'm calling this Working with Our Inner Child. Part one is, how do we deal with our inner child? We often have the feeling of an inner conflict within ourselves, of the adult who we think we are, and a hidden inner self at variance with our adult identity. The unseen hidden self is commonly referred to as our inner child. Your inner child is the echo of the child you once were. We each have our own history, and we have all been influenced by our environment, events, and the significant people around us. Our inner child has stored those memories and their impact upon us. Up to the age of six years, our brain was functioning at a relatively slow pace. The theta brainwave frequency of four to seven cycles per second which is a very receptive brainwave state, and we would have been profoundly affected by our experiences during these early formative years. We will have made some decisions at a subconscious level about how we should be and what we should do in order to be seen as all right and to be allowed to stay around and to survive in our families because our families were the utmost importance to us. Our later experiences will have reinforced these early beliefs and formed our own script for how our life should be. We carry these immature scripts and decisions with us into adulthood when they run our lives more than 90% of the time. It therefore makes sense that we should revisit the experiences of the child we once were and to find out what our own script says about our life and the unfolding drama we have been recreating and repeating. Not doing so will result in our playing out of the same unexamined script and drama over and over again. We cannot change this internal script by talking about it or by conscious effort alone. It was designed to keep us safe, albeit in ways that now hinder us, and it isn't given up that easily. Most of the time, we are living like life like a child inside a grown-up's body, and the child within us yearns for attention, understanding, care, and support. We may try to silence these deeper longings with alcohol or drugs, by promiscuity, gambling, overspending, overeating, workaholism, self-harming, and other ways of avoiding the real and deeper needs we have. Needs which we haven't met or have let us become fully aware that things are lacking, and if we try to find a way to have those needs met, it becomes very difficult and a bit of a puzzle. Now, I found a very interesting classic book by Charles Whitfield called Healing the Child Within, and it was published in 1987. He talks about the inner child, and he calls it the child within. According to Charles Whitfield, the child within refers to that part of each of us 
which is ultimately alive, energetic, creative, and fulfilled. It is our real self, who we truly are. And with our parents' unknowing help and society's assistance, most of us deny our inner child. When this child within is not nurtured or allowed freedom of expression, a false or codependent self emerges. We begin to live our lives from a victim stance and experience difficulties in resolving emotional traumas. The gradual accumulation of unfinished mental and emotional business can lead to chronic anxiety, fear, confusion, emptiness, and unhappiness. Denial of the child within and the subsequent emergence of a false self or negative ego are particularly common among children and adults who grew up in troubled families, such as those where chronic physical or mental illness was, rigidity, coldness, or lack of nurturing. Yet, there is a way out. There is a way to discover and heal our child within and to break free of the bondage and suffering from relying on our false self. There was another interesting book that I found. It's by Thich Na Han in his book called Reconciliation, Healing the Inner Child. He says, in each of us, there is a young suffering child. We have all had times of difficulty as children, and many of us have experienced trauma. Every time we're in touch with the experiences of suffering, we believe we can't bear it, and we stuff our feelings and memories deep down in our subconscious mind. It may be that we haven't dared face this child for many decades, but just because we may have ignored the child doesn't mean she or he isn't there. The wounded child is always there, under the surface, trying to get our attention. We want to end our suffering by sending the child to a deep place within and staying as far away as possible. But running away doesn't end our suffering. It only prolongs it. You have to talk to your inner child several times a day. Only then can healing take place. Embracing your child tenderly, you reassure him or her that you will never let him or her down again or leave him or her unattended. These are very wise words from two very well-known authors. And it all goes down to the type of inappropriate or destructive behavior that we go through as adults. So destructive behavior can take various forms from subtle self-sabotage and self-defeating patterns to passive hostility, to severe self-destructive symptoms, violent aggression, and sometimes bad deeds. Commonly, destructive behavior in adults bears the impetuous, impulsive quality of childish petulance or narcissistic te temper tantrums or an infantile neediness, dependency, and dread of abandonment, or an irresponsibility and angry refusal to be adult, sort of what we would call the Peter Pan syndrome. This is what people who follow Carl Jung call the girl or boy complex. In Latin, it's the puer or puella complex. And this provides a basis for what has come to help in psychology and self-help movements. See, for example, the writings of Dr. Aaron Byrne, Dr. Alice Miller, or John Bradshaw. And this is known commonly now as inner child. What exactly is this so-called inner child? Does it truly exist and why should we care? 
To begin with, the inner child is real. Not literally, not physically, but figuratively, metaphorically real. It is, like complexes in general, a psychological or phenomenological reality and an extraordinarily powerful one at that. Indeed, most mental disorders and destructive behavior patterns are, as Freud first intimated, more or less related to this unconscious part of ourselves. We were all once children and still have that child dwelling within us. But most adults are quite unaware of this. And this lack of conscious relatedness to our own inner child is precisely where so many behavioral, emotional, and relationship difficulties stem from. The fact is that the majority of so-called adults are not truly adults at all. We all get older. Anyone with a little luck can do that. But psychologically speaking, this is not adulthood. True adulthood hinges on acknowledging, accepting, and taking responsibility for loving and parenting one's own inner child. For most adults, this never happens. Instead, their inner child has been denied, neglected, disparaged, abandoned, or rejected. We are told by society to grow up, putting childish things aside. To become adults, we've been taught that our inner child, representing our childlike capacity for innocence, wonder, awe, joy, sensitivity, and playfulness, must be stifled, quarantined, or even killed. The inner child comprises and potentiates these positive qualities but it also holds our accumulated childhood hurts, traumas, fears, and angers. Grown-ups are convinced they have successfully outgrown, jettisoned, and left this child and its emotional baggage long behind, but this is far from the truth. In fact, these so-called adults are unwittingly being constantly influenced or covertly controlled by this unconscious inner child. For many, it is not an adult self-directing their lives, but rather an emotionally wounded inner child inhabiting an adult body. It's like a five-year-old running around in a 40-year-old body. It is a hurt, angry, fearful little boy or girl calling the shots, making adult decisions a boy or girl being sent out into the world to do a man or woman's job. A five or 10 year old, or two of them, trying to engage in grown up relationships. Can a child have a mature relationship, a career, an independent life? Yet, this is precisely what's happening with us every day to some degree or other. And then we wonder why our relationships fall apart why we feel so anxious, afraid, insecure, inferior, small, lost, or lonely. But think about it. How else would any child feel having to fend for themselves in an apparently adult world without proper parental supervision, protection, structure, or support? This is the confusing state of affairs we so frequently see in seekers of counseling or psychotherapy. It is not what is called dissociative identity disorder or multiple personality, but rather a far more common, pervasive, and insidious sort of socially sanctioned dissociation. But if we can recognize this problem for what it is, we can begin dealing with it by choosing to become psychological, not just chronological adults. So how is this accomplished? First, one becomes conscious of his or her own inner child. 
Remaining unconscious is what empowers the dissociated inner child to take possession of the personality at times to overcome the will of the adult. Next, we learn to take our inner child serious and to consciously communicate with that little boy or girl within, to listen to how he or she feels and what he or she needs from us here and now. The often frustrated primal needs of that perennial inner child for love, acceptance, protection, nurturance, understanding, remain the same today as when we were children. As suitable adults then, we futilely attempt to force others into fulfilling these infantile needs for us. But this is doomed to failure. What we didn't sufficiently receive in the past from our parents as children must be confronted in the present, painful though it may be. The past trauma, sadness, disappointments, and depression cannot be changed and must be accepted. Becoming an adult means swallowing this bitter pill, as I call it. That, unfortunately, for most of us, certain infantile needs were, maliciously or not, unmet by our imperfect parents or caretakers. And these needs never will be, no matter how good or smart or attractive or spiritual or loving we become. Those days are over. What was done cannot be undone. We should not, as adults, now expect others to meet all of these unfulfilled childhood needs. They cannot. Authentic adulthood requires both accepting the painful past and the primary responsibility for taking care of that inner child's needs, for being a good enough parent to him or her now and in the future. In essence, we have to parent ourselves the way we would have loved to have been parented when we were a child. And this is a learning experience. The adult part of the personality learns to relate to the inner child exactly as a good parent relates to a real child, providing discipline, limits, boundaries, and structure. These are all, along with support, nurturance, and acceptance, indispensable elements of loving and living with any child, whether metaphorical or actual. By initiating and maintaining an ongoing dialogue between the two, a reconciliation between inner child and mature adult can now be reached. A new mutually beneficial cooperative symbiotic relationship can thus be created, in which the sometimes conflicting needs of both the adult self and the inner child can be creatively satisfied. Now, here are some signs that your inner child is wounded. These will be shown in low self-esteem, poor body image, mood and emotional imbalances, problems with boundaries being too rigid or too weak, problems with eating, harming yourself, psychosexual difficulties, being false and wearing masks, identity problems, being a rebel, a hoarder, a bully, a perennial victim or a super achiever, intimacy problems, commitment problems, a general lack of trust in yourself and others, criminal behavior, excessive lying, being overly responsible for others, being fiercely competitive and a poor loser, dependencies and addictions, a lack of genuine friends, obsessive and needy behavior, fear of authority figures, being manipulative, being passive or being aggressive. Now this is a pretty long list of how we can have wounds that give us this type of behavior. And this is not an exhaustive list. This is the type of stuff that brings people into counseling. To repair and heal the wounds 
caused by parents and others who didn't know any better. It is always about the unmet needs of the inner child, the place of both our early wounding and the most profound healing. You've probably heard it said that your parents did the best that they could to raise you. And this is ultimately true because they were raised in a certain way and they picked up behavioral patterns and how to view and deal with the world. And then that's the learning that they then brought to being your parents. So it may not be perfect for what you need or needed, but that is the reality. So what can we do to help our wounded inner child? We can learn how to meet, rescue, and adopt this wounded child who still lives deep inside us. After all, you are the only person who can guarantee never to leave you. We can then emotionally contain and soothe our inner child and allow the competent adult inside of us to attend to business out in the world by being the adult and shielding the inner child from having to deal with a confusing world. However, we must regularly keep in touch with what our inner child still needs from us, which is to be truly cared for by someone who wants the very best for them, and that's you. If you have a photograph of yourself as a small child, this will help you to empathetically reconnect with him or her. The aim of which is to now understand their plight and to show them and yourself the compassion which has been missing. It is often easier to feel compassion for other people than it is for yourself. And you may have been rejecting and ignoring the yearning of your inner child who has been calling out to you over many years for your interest, attention, compassion, and love. It may mean now allowing yourself to have treats and rewards that you would never have allowed yourself or have been allowed by your parents in the past. The sensible, competent adult part of you should be able to set fair and sensible boundaries around this so that you do not overindulge yourself or use any rewards as either a distraction or as a cover-up for your deeper pain. Sometimes the feelings of low self-worth that take residence are remnants of old wounds from childhood. Not having emotional needs met as a child, whether real or perceived, can lie buried deep within and resurface when adult rejection occurs. Core beliefs about oneself are questioned. Here's an exercise to rebuild a connection with your wounded inner child and to help that child to heal. To start, assume a comfortable position, either sitting in a chair with your legs uncrossed, your arms at your sides, or if you prefer, lying on your back. Begin by breathing deeply in through your nose and out through your mouth for several minutes. As you focus on your breath, be aware of any tension in your jaw, neck, shoulders, and back. Release the tension in your muscles as you exhale. Continue deep belly breaths as you breathe in and out, in and out, and relax your body. Now, picture yourself as a younger, smaller version. And this younger version is standing in front of you to the left. Perhaps you see yourself as a child of about five years old. Look clearly at the image of your child self, observing what your child looks like and what he or she is doing. What is your child wearing? What is the expression on his or her face? Where is he or she? As your awareness of your inner child increases, also picture an adult you on your right. 
This is the version of yourself you see in the future. Strong, independent, and loving. Imagine a conversation between your child and your future adult self. As the future adult looks to the child and asks how she or he is, imagine what the child is feeling. Fear, sadness, loneliness. What is the child thinking or feeling? What does the child need from the adult? Listen intently as the child expresses his or her thoughts, feelings, and needs. Now, see the adult use response to the child. The adult is patient, encouraging, warm, and loving. This adult speaks to the child in a supportive and loving way, assuring the child of acceptance, forgiveness, safety, and unconditional love. Allow the adult to apologize the times the child was left alone. Here the adult promised to protect and nurture the child. Envision a loving exchange where the adult is strong and confident and the child is reassured and content. See the child smiling. Upon finishing your visualization, use these affirmations frequently to continue self-healing. I am loved and supported. I am appreciated and admired. I am secure and safe. I have a deep sense of belonging. This is an exercise that you can practice daily for 10 to 15 minutes to mend the broken parts of you that need healing. Write out the affirmations that you find helpful and keep them in a place where you can see and read them daily. It takes time and work, but the only way that you can really heal the wounds from the inner child and begin to fully live your potential as an adult is to do inner child work. So has your adult self spent time with your inner child today? In my next episode, I'm going to be dealing with part two of how to deal with your inner child. And we will be examining inner child work and other techniques that will give you a more profound way to heal yourself. I truly hope that you will find some great takeaways from my musings today. If you want further information or want to talk about more ideas with me, contact me through my website www.thepassionmotivatedperiod.com or by email at coachcaroldavies at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember, you can change your life at any time and become the success you want to be. I look forward to connecting with you again next week for part two of how to deal with your inner child. Bye now. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern for only the best for you with Carol Davies on Global Voice Radio.